What's a story, amigos? This is Kino with some cool stories for today's story time. First, Marion Ross reads the story of a little bird that gets trapped in the subway. It's okay. It's okay. Don't be afraid. I want to help you. Meet a king who takes long baths. Today we fish in the tub. In the tub? <laughs> oh. And a little bunny gets lost in the big city. Holly, father began, but there was no answer. Major funding for story time is made possible by a grant from Helen and Peter Bing, so that families everywhere can share the joy of reading with their children. Additional funding is provided by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. And by the annual financial support from viewers like you. I'm glad to be inside where I can... Uh... <gasps> oh, brother! Ay, ay, ay! Lucy's paintings are gonna be ruined with all this water! Oh, gee, there's a leak in the ceiling. I, I wonder if I should move them. Uh, maybe not. I... Oh, brother, I better go and tell her right now. Well, this one is Subway Sparrow. Have you heard of it? I love this book. It's about a little girl on a subway, and she finds a bird on the subway. Yes. Right. And what a problem. Oh, absolutely. Oh, so, Lucy, what, Lucy. It, it, hold on. Hold on, Kino. And, and, and it has three different languages. Yes, so no parent should be intimidated by this book. You just do the best you can. It's written in English, Spanish, and Polish. Polish. That's I, it's fun. I see? think we should read it. But 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 Lucy, <sighs> what's the matter, Kino? Oh, you gotta come over, Lucy's. Uh, Lucy, the rain. You see her paintings. <sighs> she's so excited about the book, she's not listening. Because you haven't said anything yet. <sighs> if there's a problem, let's see if we can fix it. Okay. Hey guys, how about if Marion reads the story of the Subway Sparrow? Oh sure, sure. But but see the rain over there. It's, yeah, it's, let's it's, read it. Oh, but first, we have to take care of something. Just so wait for us. OK, come on, Kino, let's go. OK, come on, let's go. What's the matter with the boys? <laughs> you know them, always full of energy. See, Kevin, there's the leak up there in the ceiling. Lucy's paintings are going to get all wet. Boy, oh, should be so upset for paintings are ruined. Why do we just carefully push the paintings out of the way? Well, I don't know. What if something happens? We'll be extra careful, OK? Hmm. Gosh, I couldn't decide to move the paintings, and you did it real quick. Oh, please, you could have done it. Just takes you longer, because you're not as old as I am. There, that had to do it. Let's go list that story now. Oh, gosh, Kevin thinks so quickly. He makes me feel like I'm not so smart. Well, I guess it's just because he's older than I am, huh? Oh, well. <sighs> done and ready for the story now. What's it called? It's called Subway Sparrow. And it is written by Leila Torres. And she did the illustrations. And you're going to hear three languages in here. You're going to hear English, Spanish, and Polish. And I'm going to do my best. I don't speak <laughs> Polish. <laughs> Whoa. Here we go. Subway Sparrow by Leila Torres. the Atlantic Avenue station in Brooklyn, a sparrow flew into a subway car on the D train. Little bird, what are you doing down here? With a rumble, the train began to move. It's OK. It's OK. Don't be afraid. I want to help you. E esto. Un pajarito en el metro. Mister, can you catch him with your hat? 
Sí, con mi sombrero tal vez lo atajemos. If I go that way, maybe he'll fly toward you. Sí, corre, corre. And the train rocked back and forth as it gained speed. Hey, there's a bird in here. I'll help you, but my hands are so big I might hurt him. Ay, se nos voló otra vez. Oh, no, no, he's off again. Oh, Yinku, so te von Belkio, Robis, Porciangu. We're slowing down. Let's catch him before the crowd gets on the train. Quizá, con mi sombrío. Yay, dotikai go, parasolem. No, forget the umbrella. It might hurt him. Moya apashka. Yeah, cover him with the scar. Si, kubramuzlo. Well, hurry. I'll pick him up. The doors of the subway car closed. With a hiss, the train pulled away from the platform. His heart is beating so quickly. He is so soft, like a little cloud in my hands. Adios, pajarito. Good luck. To Virginia. Bye-bye, little one. Bye-bye. <laughs> wow, that was a good story. Hey, I just thought of something. The people in the subway all worked together to help the sparrow, right? Just like Tino and I work together to save your paintings, Lucy. What, what do you mean, save my paintings? Well, see, that's what I was trying to tell you. Your paintings were getting wet from the rain, Ooh. so we had to move them. Oh, oh, my. I have to see oh. this. Come on, it's right over here. It's not raining as hard now, but this is where the paintings were. Mm -hmm. Here's the water. See? Mm -hmm. So Kevin had this great idea. He said, let's move the paintings so they don't get all wet and ruined. Well, it looks like this is the only one that got wet. Oh, you're so lucky. Oh, mm -hmm. we'll see. I'm only lucky thanks to Kevin and Kino. Thank you so much. You're my heroes. You saved my paintings. And I'm going to do something specially nice for you. Oh, it's nothing, Lucy. We were glad to help. Well, it was Kevin's idea to move the paintings. He's always coming up with good ideas. Mm. Gosh, I wish I were older like Kevin. Then I'd have more good ideas, too. Well, today, both of you are my heroes. Why don't you go visit Audrey and Don while I make something special? Whoa, something special? Like what? What do you mean? Oh, well, you'll see, Kino. You'll see. Well, I know they're waiting for you, so go on. If we go... Okay, Kev, Kev let's go. Huh, gosh, something special, huh? <laughs> I can't wait. Oh, hi, Kevin. Hi, Kino. Hi. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm Audrey, and this is Don, my husband. Good to meet you both. Hi, Audrey. Hi, Thanks Don. Thanks for coming nice by. Meet you too, Audrey and Don. <laughs> We're glad you stopped by today, because we've heard that you like to read books a lot. Oh, yeah, we love to read books. I know. They're so cool. I like there's pictures and stuff. Yeah, well, that's what we're doing. Working on some sketches right now for another book. In fact, we'd like to read one of our books to you today. You mean a book yeah. that you wrote and drew the pictures for? Mm, big Goods in the Bathtub, yes. Okay. Wow. Audrey wrote the story, yeah. and I drew the pictures, or I painted the pictures. I had a, Actually, I had a problem when I was writing this book. I had already written a beginning, and I had a middle, but I didn't have an ending. At least, I didn't have an ending I liked. Well... What did you do? Well, at the same time, our son, Bruce Robert, who, who was 10 years old at that time, had a problem, too. And his problem was that he loved to stay in the tub and take long, long baths. 
and I couldn't get him out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My little sister, Mariana, she likes to do that, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a common human failing. It is. Well, one day, I went upstairs to our bathroom, and I figured out how to solve the problem of getting our son out of the tub. And when I solved that problem, I solved the problem of how to end the story in my book. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, well, how'd you do it? Well, I won't tell you right now because it would give away the ending. I oh, think I'd rather read it to you and save it as a surprise. And I had a problem with the, with the illustrations of the book, and that was there's so many characters. What would they all look like? Who would they be? I decided it would be fun if they were people that I knew so that I could paint my own friends and family into the book. And the king is a very important character. And as you can see from this photograph, which is a picture of the model, it's my old college buddy, Harry, and he looks just like King Bidgood. Yeah, they look sort of the same, don't they? They do. <laughs> But just King Bigger has a bigger, like, beard. Yes, yes. indeed. I, I added a lot of beard to the king in the story. I thought he needed more beard than my friend had. And I got to play the part of the queen in King Big Good. And it was a lot of fun because I got to put on makeup and costumes and, and uh, act out my, my part and actually read the lines of the book, kind of like an actor. <laughs> there was one other important character. Actually, the star of the show is the page. And I can think of no one better to play the page than our young son, Bruce Robert, who was about in the fourth grade or the third grade at that time. And here he is, a picture of Bruce posing as the page in the climactic moment of the, uh, the book, the final bathtub scene. Do you think maybe we could read the book now? Well, we'd love to. Yeah. Certainly. Sounds like Let's a good idea. Let's go back to the beginning and... Okay, let's go. All right. <laughs> help, help, cried the page when the sun came up. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? I do, cried the knight when the sun came up. Get out, it's time to battle. Come in, cried the king with a boom. Boom, boom. Today, we battle in the tub. <laughs> help, help, cried the page when the sun got hot. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? Do, cried the queen when the sun got hot. Get out, it's time to lunch. Come in, cried the king with a yum, yum, yum. Today, we lunch in the tub. In the tub? <laughs> Help, help, cried the page when the sun sank low. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? I do, cried the Duke when the sun sank low. Get out, it's time to fish. Come in, cried the king with a trout, trout, trout. Today we fish in the tub. Oh. Help, help, cried the page when the night got dark. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? We do, cried the court when the night got dark. Get out for the masquerade ball. Come in, cried the king with a jig, jig, jig. Tonight, we dance in the tub. Oh, not the tub. <laughs> help, help, cried the court when the moon shone bright. King Bidgood's in the bathtub and he won't get out. Oh, who knows what to do? Who knows what to do? 
I do, said the page, when the moon shone bright. And then yes. he pulled the plug. Story. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You much. Glad we got to read it to you. I, I really like that a lot. Boy, that king loved the water. Oh, that reminds me, Kino. We have to go back to see what Lucy is making for us. Remember? The oh, cushion yeah. paintings out of the way of the rainwater. Oh, yeah, right. Let's go. And she said she'd have a surprise. Come on, let's go. Bye, you guys. Okay, bye. bye. Thanks for bye. coming, bye. Kevin. Bye-bye, Kino. Nice to meet you. To us. Yeah, bye. 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 Well, hi. We're back. Hi. Oh, hi. Don't forget me. Kevin, <laughs> I want you to meet my granddaughter. This is Taylor. Her mother dropped her off, and she's going to pick her up later, and she's going to be with us for story time. Oh, hi, oh, Taylor. Hi, How Taylor. Are you? Thanks for coming. Story time so far. <laughs> Good. Hey, boys. <laughs> Look what I made for you. Oh, oh are you lucky? Are you hey, can we put a lucky? Oh, sure. Oh, cool. Hey, lucky, though. Thanks. Listen, I have another book for us. Uh -huh. It's about two brothers. Yes. Another one. Ollie is the older one and he's very smart. Herbert is the younger brother and he looks up to Ollie but wishes that he could be the oldest one. Give that to Grandma. Okay. This is called Ollie Knows Everything. Ooh, it's okay. written by Abby Levine and illustrated by Lynn Munsinger. That. Ollie Knows Everything. When the O'Haras went to New York, Ollie knew everything, just like he did at home. He knew how to fasten the seatbelt. He knew how to put the tray down for eating. And when the bags went around, he yelled, there's our suitcase. And it was. In New York, things were just as bad. He could read hamburger on the menu. He could open his eyes underwater. And when they went to the top of the Empire State Building, Ollie pointed to a building nearby. There's a hotel, he shouted. And it was. Ollie always knows everything, Herbert complained to Mother. Oh, he doesn't really, Mother said. But I'm sure that it feels that way. The streets were noisy and crowded, and everything was fun to look at. The O'Hares took the subway and the ferry to Ellis Island. And they saw the great hall where immigrants once came through. And Mother said that her great-grandmother had stood there long ago. Herbert saw a photo of someone who looked like Mother. And Ollie said, but they learned all about Ellis Island in school. Look, look, said Herbert when they got back from the subway. I can put my token in the slot. Big deal, said Ollie. Will he always be older than me, Herbert asked Mother, even when I'm seven? Even when you're old gray bunnies, <laughs> Ollie will still be older, said Mother. And then she stopped and she thought for a moment. Here's a poem for you, she said. You were born when he was two. That's why he knows more than you. But when you both are big and tall, Ollie won't know more at all. Mm. <laughs> Did you make that up? Herbert asked. Just now, just for you, said Mother. But Herbert was not cheered. Oh, it would be years before he and Ollie were both grown up. The subway was crammed with riders and the O'Hares had to stand. The speeding train lurched back and forth. <laughs> oh, and Herbert felt squished. Ollie was stuck between a large lady and a tall, thin man. The train pulled into the station. Time to get off, said Father and they were swept away in a throng of passengers. Ollie, Father began, but there was no answer. Ollie was not there. The door snapped shut. Herbert turned around. He said, oh, Ollie's still on the train, he yelled. 
And as the train sped out, they could see Ollie's face pressed against the window. And then the train disappeared into the darkness. Oh. He's gone. Well, I, I will take the next train to the next station and look, Father shouted. Maybe Ollie got off and he's waiting for us there. And Mother shouted back, I'll, I'll find the police station. And she ran up the stairs, pulling Herbert by one paw. The police were very kind. Not to worry, ma'am, said Sergeant Wolf. We'll find your lad. And he took Ollie's description. And then he talked on the phone to the subway police. He's seven years old. He's wearing a red T-shirt, a blue shorts, and an orange baseball cap. And he answers to the name of Ollie. Herbert wished that he could be lost, too. Ollie always did everything better. <laughs> After a long wait, they saw Father trudge into the station. I didn't see Ollie anywhere, he said grimly. Well, oh, go back to your hotel, said Sergeant Wolf. We'll be in touch with you there. Mother and Father walked slowly back to the hotel. They each held tightly to one of Herbert's paws. Can I be the oldest now, he asked. Can I be the one to tell his teacher? But neither mother or father replied. Suddenly, Herbert remembered how Ollie had looked with his face up against the window. Ollie had been scared. What if he was scared now, somewhere, all by himself? Herbert's heart beat very fast. Do, do you think that Ollie will come back, he asked. Well, he'll be OK, said Mother, but tears were streaming down her cheeks. Oh, I'm, I'm sure that he will, said Father. But Father did not look sure at all. The streets were noisy and crowded. Everything looked sad and scary. They entered the hotel lobby. And there was Ollie. He was sitting at the bellhop's counter, holding a lollipop. And there was a small crowd of people around him, and a policewoman, too. Ollie was talking excitedly to everybody. Ollie, he yelled mother and father, and they grabbed Ollie, and they hugged him. How did you get here, father asked. Well, <clears throat> I got off at the next stop with everybody else. Ollie explained, and I followed them all upstairs. Then I saw the Empire State Building. I knew our hotel was nearby, so I just walked back here. <laughs> well, I'm amazed, said Mother. I am flabbergasted, said Father. Smart kid, said the bellhop. You're a brave boy, said the policewoman, who had a gun in her holster and handcuffs on her belt. Herbert's mouth dropped open. It was true. Ollie did know everything. Afterwards, the O'Hares rested in their hotel room, and Herbert and Ollie raced their cars on the carpet while Mother and Father watched Paws on television. And Herbert's car won twice. And the air conditioner hummed, and the room was cozy. Herbert whispered, oh, were you scared on the train? And Ollie didn't answer right away. Then he said softly, yeah, maybe a little. I want to. <laughs> they just raced their cars a little more. Mother, mother, said Herbert, would you make up a poem for Ollie? Mother thought for a moment, and then she said, Ollie rode off underground. He got lost and then got found. <laughs> <laughs> I found myself, said Ollie, pointing it out. You sure did, said Father, giving each boy a big squeeze. Come on, Ollie, said to Herbert. Let's all go down to the pool, and I'll teach you how to open your eyes underwater. Ollie and Herbert swam all evening. They searched underwater for sharks and enemy submarines. And Ollie taught Herbert the bunny paddle. Mother 
smiled at them. Oh, she said, oh, oh, it is so good to have Ollie back. And it was. <laughs> oh, great story. Yeah. Huh. Wouldn't oh, you be scared? Great story. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. I what about Kino? Oh, Kino, did you like it? Yeah, did oh, you? Oh, well, uh, let me see. Gosh, I'm still thinking about it. <laughs> oh, well, you know, Ollie and Herbert are great friends and play well together, even though Ollie's older. What does that tell you? Tells me to like my friend Super Kino, <laughs> if we know that he's younger than I am. Oh, gosh, you do? Well, I wish I could come up with good ideas like you do, Super Kevin. Oh, Thank you. Kino, you mm -hmm. will. Yeah, oh, okay. you'll grow and have good older ideas because right now you have good young ideas. Right, Taylor? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you again, my sweet heroes. Now, does anybody have some super picks for today? Oh, I have this one. It's called oh. Super Grandpa. A true story about a grandpa who wins a thousand mile bicycle race. Oh, and I have one too. One. Uh, my super pick is called Three Cheers for Tacky. And Tacky's another hero who also happens to be very, very funny. <laughs> oh, well, that's all for today. Thank you so much. And be sure and join us again here on Storytime. Until then. Keep the story alive! See you later, my super amigos. <laughs>